Let's get started, my little friend. Welcome to the Vectorize. I am John Silva. Guys, thank you so much for joining me here today. Today, I'm going to make a very awesome lesson to show you about how you can use opacity, how you can also apply awesome transparency techniques using Affinity Designer. All right, so leave here the like because look at this. I just want to let you know that this is a premiere video, which means that it's a recorded video, but there is a same value uh, regarding the live stream that I usually do here on the Vectorize channel. So, what we do here, let me show you already, okay? We're gonna do this lesson about opacity and transparency. Guys, let me explain here in a quick way for you that you want to learn the best tips for using this tool, okay? First of all, I wanna share with you about how you can use the transparency tool. Let's understand, first of all, the fundamentals. So, the fundamental about using the transparency, that case, you can apply in any vector in any kind of image. And also it works like a gradient. Let me show you this example already. So here, I'm gonna use this exercise for you. So if you're on the club, my friend, please join the club because on there you're gonna get my exercises. This one, it is our current exercise. And what we will do here, first of all, it is to understand how we can use the transparency tool. But before we do the transparency tool, we need to understand how the opacity works. So if it's your first time here, just look at this. Well, if I add here a circle like this, you see the circle, okay? And then the first method that you have, if you take a look on here, is that you can apply the transparency, which includes the opacity here, okay? In any kind of object, it includes image and shapes. Okay, any kind of layer, you're gonna have the opacity. Good. And also, you have, for example, let's say that you add this color, like that. And then I will add a new shape here, just show you, in white. This is very useful as well, this option that is called uh, color. And here we have the opacity. You can also decrease the opacity from here. So we have one method here, opacity, and another here in this area, okay? After that, you have as well the transparency tool, this one. And then you can apply right here and have this result, as you can see. Basically, you can have many different of opacity here and here, three methods. And which one I usually use most? It really depends, okay? I usually use a lot the opacity here, layer opacity, to decrease the opacity of that layer that I'm using as inspiration, as reference, and when I need to vector things up. This opacity here on the color, I usually use more for, I'd say, situations when I need to make some gradients. But if you ask me, hey John, what about if we have, for example, look at this. I could have, in that case, let me show you this. We could have here the opacity like that, and then also the transparency like this. Oh. The same object can contain the transparency too, and also the gradient with the opacity lower right here. Can you see what's happening, my friend? We are having two directions for the opacity happening here. I hope this is very clear because what I've explained to you, it is how you can use the transparency tool and also the gradient tool using Affinity Designer. Are you understand? Please leave it a like because I will give you my best techniques so you can understand how you can apply these techniques. Well, uh, what do you do? First of all, let me explain how that we work. For this challenge that we're gonna do for today, as you can see, we have this object, okay, very simple one. 
if you can describe to me how you you would make this happen all right but before we do that we have here our guideline so I hope that you already understand where to use the transparency as layer in color and transparency too you have these three methods I hope that this is very clear but when you talk about transparency what where is the application that you can do I think that it's gonna be important because you need to improve more your light when, when you are creating any kind of object the visibility and also the contrast I will tell you why here as you see we have this object and this object you contains a very transparent object okay as you can see but before we do the transparent by itself we need to focus on the shapes and which kind of shapes we can see here we are seeing here a circle we are seeing here a square another square here and another here good very good let me bring this here in this side and then I'm gonna make this all in black like this what I got here by doing that I call as tell me in the chat what I call this I don't know if you are a vectorized member my friend here silhouette the silhouette okay this is the very simple way to start any kind of vector you start from the corners and then you have this result immediately in just 10 seconds you can have this result okay very good but I don't want to make this realistic I want to make this stylized which means that I want to exaggerate the shapes so feel free all right feel free my friend to do in your art style I don't want let's say I don't like to bring here rules about hey you should you should do like this like in my one no 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 I like to see you doing your version and I, I like to see you doing your creativity on your side I just teach you here the fundamentals the theories the part that is gonna be easy for you to accomplish what you want okay this is my job on here and then what you do it is to change the shapes first of all I'll convert everything here in curves select all of them they will be selected like this group them all they are grouped let's call this as bottle very good bottle then what you do is convert them to curves they are already in curves right let's see no not yet select them all convert this to curves you see here by selecting all and then apply the convert to curves why I like to apply the convert to curves because you will make the shapes not anymore in geometry they will become free forms after that we can exaggerate even more which means this look we can make this bigger like that we can make this rounded we can make this bigger here this one as well bigger I use C which is the corner tool because I like to do this I like to make the corners rounded not very flat at this point like that here the nice thing about this let me tell you I will change this as well and make something like that here very good so the shapes here is quite similar it's not equal because I'm making this stylized okay and what you need to understand guys first of all it is that the silhouette look at this could become a character this could become a character right this could become what which kind of silhouette you can see here I I can see the, the Frankenstein or big that you know big uh, head here you know kind of hair as well and big chin but look you can create any kind of only with this you can create a logo design in terms of simplification right make sense very nice there is one exercise I remember let me tell you this there was one book that I was reading is from Steven Silver he is a very great character artist designer and there was one exercise that he does about you using some shapes let's say this one you can grab any kind of shape like this one and then you make the silhouette and then you can create the character from that silhouette this is a very awesome 
exercise but what we are doing this is here it is just to understand the silhouette the power of using silhouette in our you know creation but here i'm gonna remove because it was just to uh, bring you more context about the the use of tools okay my friends i hope that you are enjoying this lesson and what do we do look at this i'm going to uh that case apply the outline just for now can be like that let me activate here the stroke panel just to see because i need to arrange the curves here as you see okay if i make this in white and this in, in black it can be like this and outline in black so you see what's happening with the outlines all right it's gonna be important because i want to make this rounded here here i'm gonna make this rounded as well this rounded and this rounded and this rounded here i'm applying perspective all right so look at this what's important when you are applying things like that for example, here we have a very flat area flat which means that you can't see what's in above and what's below because this is in aligned to the horizontal line which means that it is full 2d it's called 2d okay 2d but once you have something like a perspective so you are able to see something like this can you see that it adds some kind of perspective to it i want to add perspective to my object here let's do this i want to make this very great for you to understand how you can apply perspective in 2d objects all right so we have here a 2d image and then we are applying here a 2d technique i will do something like that duplicate apply this below i will move this below here or oh, moving with my hotkeys remember my friend you can get my affinity masterclass course available on the description below where i explain how you can use my shortcuts okay here we go i will i'll keep something like this i i like and guys something that i'm using a lot uh, during my work here as freelancer i know that you know that i work as freelancer and i'm i'm using a lot the the contour tool in my designs like you see if i select all these shapes that i have right now these ones and i will use here the contour tool and I, I can do this whoa look at this it looks like that look how, how incredible is this it doesn't look that there is a bottle that it is getting nearby to to us oh woo, very nice i can see this all right it's really really insane it's like a three-dimensional object coming to close but what's happening here actually is that i'm using the contour tool in order to expand it and make this shape even bigger right it's, it's making bigger I, I like to make this because it makes somehow the object looks more attractive in terms of boldness you know uh, it's something that i like to do in my designs so i'll apply here on top there, i like the shapes i'll leave it like that and now my friend it is finally time to apply here the minimal shadings i need to tell you this doing things in grayscale it is very easy in order to accomplish a fast result in light effects uh what i mean about this let me first of all duplicate this and this will be the v2 and v2 you order to have backups so we can compare it later guys pay attention to this it's gonna be very important i'm gonna make this in all uh, grayscale can be like this like that for now dark and then i'll duplicate it is already duplicated using hotkeys or you can go here edit and duplicate by click on here now i'm going to use the contour tool resize this down and make this more white like that that's fine uh, let's leave it like this just remember that if you use the the contour tool you can do this result like that very good this is what we want for now keep in mind that what i want to do it is to remove the outlines inside here in that case i'm gonna remove this outlines and also from this one that you see 
I want to remove the outlines like this. I want to have this result. I will explain why. Because right now, I want to do here and apply the transparency to review. Remember that the focus of this lesson, it's, it's about the transparency tool, how we can use and where. And this is what the lesson is about. It's about having light, visibility and contrast. Focus on this, all right? Focus on this. Right now, what I do, it is to apply the transparency. Right now, I will select all of these shapes, this one. Transparency to activate it here and click and push onto here like this but be careful because i don't want to use linear because it's too stiff it makes too too not very nice <laughs> and what i do is select this and use the elliptical mode and apply here the light in this area i will have it here and then i will copy this i can paste into others areas so how i do that Ctrl C to copy and then you can use Ctrl Shift TV which is going to copy the properties, the shading properties and then you can paste the style. Basically it's how I, you know, save a lot of time. And also look at this. I'm just pasting here the, these colors like that. Okay, using the, the transparency in that case here and here. Like this, very good. And what's gonna be important right now is that, for example, I'm going to apply here the transparency in the objects below. What I mean about this, you see. If we hide here these shapes with the you know light ones that we have, like these ones, what to start to do, so you can follow me what's happening. I'm going to use the transparency tool, this one, and I will activate this option, elliptical, like this. And then I'm going to reverse this, like that, here. What is you know, the main goal here with this um, shape properties that we are applying? It is to apply the transparency tool. But in that case, it is to make this like glass, like this one, all right? Because if you if you place anything behind the glass, you will be able to see. What is this called? Visibility. Which means that you can see behind. Here, uh, we are working with the transparency tool. And then I can see and apply to others objects. I can paste this to here. Oh, I will not apply to this one, to the top, because it is... Uh, no the part on top but here I'm going to manage here select and transparency tool because I, I need to manage these shapes as you see just to explain how it's working here we are applying the transparency all right and we need to understand that some objects will overlap others for example here we have this one okay that it is overlapping each other it is creating this kind of, you know, um, effect that you are seeing here. And what is important at that point it is that you adjust the transparency alongside with the shape. You see here. I'm going to make it a bit dark so you see better the values happening. This one, I'm going to use the transparency tool. Okay, I'm working over the adjustments. And then I'm just applying here that case. The adjustment on these layers like that right now just to show you let me make this more on top over it this one here more below over these two curves and apply this more to below like that good so what i want to do now just show you it is to add more lights to it for example, if I enable all the layers that I have applied before, you know, those ones, you see the results happening. I'm not going to apply too many light in this object here because it is, it's not glass, okay, this one here is not in glass. 
And what you need to keep aware about, you know, doing what I'm showing you here, for example, I'm going to apply all of this. Oh, look, for example, this one's mainly this one that it is inside in white. Okay, in white, this one as well in white, this one in white, and this one as well in white. And then look at this. What do we start to do, guys? It is to apply the color in these shapes that it is in transparent, which is the ones that it is below. Okay. Can you see here these shapes? I will start to apply color. Which color I will use? You see. I'm going to use the. can be white. Can you see? Like that. This will form now a glass. Now this is a glass. But I want to make this like in blue tonality. Which kind of contrast you want to bring? Darker or lighter? It depends. I like both. But I want to make this a bit darker. Like this. Nice. I will resize this. I will now resize this because I want to make this this area a bit more clear to, to understand. Also here, this area, I'm going to, to change a little bit like this. Okay, like that. Here. In this one also, I will remove this detail that it is going too much up. Remember that what we are doing, it is controlling where the light reads here. Okay. So we are working with basically one, two, three, and four shapes, at least for the shading of light like this. And then look, we have just applied the very simplified shading in glass as you can see and of course we start to apply some colors for example let's apply here in this one i'm gonna make this in can be brown brown to yellow something like this you know orange yeah something that goes to this palette here also this era you see i'm gonna make this in that way and this one can be more pushed to yellow, like that. Now we are reaching a nice result, as you can see. Good. And I will duplicate this because I want to to bring information to my viewers. Like, hey, I want to make this look like there is a hole here. And to make this best in, to represent a hole, I will make this in dark, like this. Just to let you know that I have a transparency going on here. A lot of transparency because I can control how how flat it is the surface. I can make something like this. I can make this more like that. Okay, here. Very good. And then just to let you know that you can uh, change the how your transparency works as you can see here. I can make this even more transparent, like that. Very good. Here below as well, I'll make this a bit more transparent. I'm using the transparency tool in order to do this. Just to let you know, I can change. And here, as you see, I'm mean, adjusting even more uh, how this glass is working. Okay. In this example, at this point, you start to recognize there are some patterns here. You have a lot of lights going on here here and here and this is the main idea okay it is to to understand how you can make the highlights from this point we are having just the soft lights i'm going to duplicate this so you understand more so we have now the version three so the version one shapes version two only the transparency and then version version three we're gonna start to add even more highlights to add the highlights on here is gonna be very simple okay well you can do this in many ways but I will do this using the vector brushes just to explain more about this 
the best practices is that we're gonna have with the transparency tool basically uh, you're gonna use the transparency tool a lot for shadings making shadows and vector brushes I'll show you how that works look at this if you have my marvelous vector brushes or my master vector brushes it's gonna be easier as well but feel free if you don't have you, you can download these brushes on my green road. I'll leave the link available to you on the description below. And here I'm going to use the can be. Let's try. Let's try the John Candy Master. <laughs> this one here for now. I'm going to make this in white. And guys, I will start here inside. Okay. The vector brush here. I'm going to use the vector brush selected already. Okay. And then I will increase this brush size, insert inside, all right, turn it on, and then, whoa, bring here a light in there, like this, nice, let's apply one more here, and go, a new one here, very good, I can also uh, make this highlight a bit less strong, which is this one. I want to make this soft let's make this bigger and soft like that very good I will now duplicate and scale down this using what the contour tool I can make this more simplified I will apply now something like that oh look at the result oh my god look at this I'm using the contour tool okay and change that shape from the, sh the shape that is below and i'm getting this marvelous result as you see look very nice and then i'm going to make this very highlight like that great i will just adjust a bit the curve and guys when you are using the contour tool you can also expand this big appearance so it's gonna make this in in vector pure vector here okay this is what we want and now as you see we are starting to have a more solid and consistent design this is what i want to do here let's apply more uh the same level of shading that we did with the vector brushes here i'm going to insert inside and i will apply here and here I'll apply as well here in this both side this is getting a bit uh, realistic in terms of shading as you see okay in both sides just to have this reflection and increase more the contrast like this very good very good and then I will apply here the vector brush here inside of this shape here that it is on top this one search inside and then I'll apply in the corners look at this whoa ah uh, here now we are having a even more a consistent design here like that you're using what the vector brushes in that case look at this my friend the result that we are reaching in less than i think 30 minutes right well congratulations if you are watching me until now leave it your like because you're gonna express your uh, enjoyment for this lesson so <laughs> guys first of all as you see now i'm going to duplicate this because we're gonna see the end result soon which is gonna be awesome i'm going to make this background now something like like this and you see the results coming even nicer okay like that so working with transparent object will always interact with what is behind okay look like this in black or doesn't matter any kind of color will adapt correctly so let's make this like this and here we go my friend we're going to start to add some kind of liquid it can be water or something well um i will do something like this i'll make this like that here good and then i want to add a sort of you know um water here i don't know what kind of water it can be uh, life a poison of love <laughs> i don't know let's try so i will duplicate this this shape i'm gonna make this in it can be red red i'm going to remove the for now 
the transparency and then I will change these shapes here. I'm duplicating because I want to take advantage and reuse you know the the shape that is here this is what I want to do. Now let's let's do something like that in a very solid shape in terms of curve here very good and then what I will do it is to add a gradient let's apply something like this here and I need to apply this below it can be here I'm doing that because as you see we need to have uh, a kind of transparency going on in these areas it can be something like that good and here's the trick point as you see we have this shape right and guys this shape is here it is just in gray and look at this I could change this to any kind of color here's the trick point this is guys <laughs> I've been you know working in this lesson just to show you how incredible this is as I was working in gray I can apply a color easily and have this incredible result I'm gonna make this in which color you want I like really the purple one but the blue also is incredible it's really cool it's not like here I like this and then I'm going to copy these properties and uh, paste into others places like this one paste here or oh, paste boom and paste here boom nice good and I can control a little bit more the transparency here here as well a little bit more to not be too too strong and here let's apply a bit of as well gradient in this one can be like this to make more believable good and then I will duplicate this make it a bit dark I wanna create sort of whole you know things going on here like cheese thing like cheese huh? here duplicate and duplicate my friend look at this yes now uh, what I want to do it is to apply a bit more control of transparency here as you can see okay and then uh, after that I want to apply more shiny effect you see you see that case I will add here can you see this layer I will duplicate this and apply this inside I'll apply this more in can be in white and then I will apply transparency to this area and look at this what I'm doing it is adding more light effect here inside of this area and also this is happening because of the clipping that I'm using I use clipping a lot in, on affinity and this is something that it's made me use affinity once I started in 2018 so after that I can explore more some blend mode overlay looks great but let's keep this in color dodge for now and look at this what I will do it is to duplicate this one and I'm going to apply now the the Gaussian blur you see into this duplicated area I'm gonna make something like this and I'll apply this on top hold on because I want to use transparency in this and like I said earlier all right like I said earlier when you are using transparency here you will be able to work much better and faster with shading, right? I'd say that my my skills with vector is attached a lot with shadings. If you have a good shading, you're gonna have a much better and clean result in terms of quality. If you want to have quality, you cannot ignore this lesson. Okay, like this one. I will apply now the blend mode. Can be something like this. The screen is going to Make it soft. You can see that each kind of blend mode is gonna create a different effect. I'm gonna make this can be 
Oh, look at this the yellow one getting getting yellow in this area. It's making it even nicer. No, oh my gosh. Awesome. Yeah, my friend, and here in this highlights from that's why i love to use vector brush and just let you know that you can get my vector brushes if you still don't have here i will group this ah oh, sorry not you don't need to group but keep them selected which means that the vector brushes here this and this using ctrl shift to select them and what's important that you understand is that we can change now and switch this color to others kind of color look at this the green the blue more push it to this area and also you can change just to let you know the size you can change if it's flat if you know the shading style this is fabulous this one here as well it depends about the style that you want but i will keep this one here the kng master in 250 like this and that's why look we could we can control this with transparency and this is the cherry on the cake here one two three there we go this is the result that we got right now and if we change the background color let's see look the result it, it is adaptable to any color that we apply like this one yes my friend look at this this was the result that we did today and if you compare the very beginning you know start of this lesson we started we started by using this reference to study we made this you know shape we made also what let me bring this more organized to you yeah then we made the shading. Next, what we did? The highlight, isn't it? And then the coloring. Here, the final result. We have just finished it in less than an hour. An hour. I I need to tell you. Uh, some years ago, I think two years ago or three, it would take me to reach this result. Something like four hours and then hopefully with the proper workflow once you develop the vectorizing skills like i have here i'm sharing in this channel everything that i know to make your life easier with the art by itself so i really hope that if you're watching this lesson you really enjoy it and you express your gratitude by just giving the like you don't need to join on the club if you don't want to but if you join there, it's, you are going to be very welcome to join us on the club. And there you go. And also, you can apply some adjustments that I'm usually applying a lot. All right. For example, it is the adjustments layer. You need to keep the layer selected, as you see. So you see the highlights selected. And then you go to the adjustments and you can apply the curves. The curves will allow you to do this. You can control this to make this more vibrant and also with more contrast. So you need to control what you feel like it's best for your project. I usually like to make things more vibrant because the way that I work with, with the things that it is more game art illustrations. So uh, yeah, this is the result that you can do as well with the curves adjustments and also others adjustments that you can learn. Everything here on my masterclass Affinity Design Master course, okay? And guys, uh, I just want to thank you so much all right, for your time. And I want to make here a review for the Vectorize Club members. In that case, this is a pre-recorded video. I just want to let you know. And I got here the design result done by down from the club. Let me give you some quick review over your design. Well, first of all, congratulations for uh, your result here. It's very nice. I saw that you made a very clean shading design here and the result it is very incredible i think that you have used the layer effect isn't it the layer effect 3d or bevel um, be careful with this kind of feature because it makes the design for example as i see here you did this era a kind of cartoon effect because you have outline but 
here, as I can see, it's a flat, it's a flat design in terms of shading. This one, this area here, and then you add a, a soft shading here. When you do that, you create a kind of you know different aspect that doesn't create a lot of, of her harmony. But this is something that I would adjust to make things more in harmony, like music. You have you know the music in harmony, like. You know, uh, you know, you have one Beethoven, things like that. <laughs> but what I want to explain it is to match more the shadows to be more equal in our aspects, to not have this kind of you know different uh, styles in the same art. This is something that I would do, okay, uh, in order to make this more consistent. But all the vectors quality that you did is incredible. Congratulations! Just these these details that I will tell you. Or you go here by making the shading soft, or you go here by making the shading shadow here as, let's say, flat, okay? But it's up to you, you decide in which direction you can go, but otherwise, congratulations for your achievement. And guys, just to let you know that you can also send your design to my Telegram. So if you're on the club, you have access uh, to send me your design result if you want to get my feedback like this where I can guide you where you can improve and where you can give you more attentions in your designs okay like I did here today and the next week uh, you know I hope that uh, you will be able to let's say next week I don't think that we're gonna have live but in case that you are on my list you will be knowing you know um, if you're gonna have live stream okay guys thank you so much for your time and I see you, you know, in another day. Thank you and bye-bye. See ya.